Here's the TLDR of how to remove the anti-glare plastic from the front of the screen. Four screws to remove the back cover, six screws to remove the uh, front bezel, then you remove the tape along the sides, then you use a hairdryer or something, start in a corner I would advise with a plastic spudger and then you work your way around and into the middle until you have the entire plastic fall off. Try to do it in one piece. It will save you a lot of hassle, I'm pretty sure. To remove this back cover, just remove four screws. This one, another one underneath there, and then the two others on the other side. And then this will just pop off. To remove the front bezel, the plastic part on the front of the screen, you need to remove six screws. The ones on the top corners here, and their counterparts down there, and also this screw down here. Not this one, but the lower one. And the same on the opposite side uh, down here. So this one and this one. And then it just pops off with a bit of wiggling perhaps. Does the Sony Trinitron Multiscan 17SF2 have an anti-glare filter? Well, it sure does look like it. So let's see if we can remove it to uh, remove this. I don't know if you know what to call it. It's like there's air bubbles or chemical discoloration or something in it. So yeah. So just find the corner and work your way through holding the uh, hair dryer or something. And you work your way over and then you can start working your way down. Heat makes all the difference. And slowly but surely you work your way towards the center. And don't go too hastily without heat because then We'll get this rip and that's not good. So now I'm going to have to work my way in through the sides and up because I'm trying to avoid using uh, like a, a metal thing against the glass. So yeah, don't break it. Go slowly and apply heat where you go. Patience. And it's off. Needs a bit of cleaning. And there's kind of a... Um, there's some leftovers of the screen on the edges, it seems. But this is outside the viewing area. So I'm not sure it's worth it to try and remove it even. And uh, I can't say there's a lot of tint in this. It seems to be pretty clear. So it shouldn't change the darkness, I think, much. We'll see. And it's been cleaned. So now at least the viewable area is clean. 
Uh, there are some rough edges, but I'm not going to do too much about it. It might cause more harm than good. Also, it should be behind the vessel, so you shouldn't see it anyway. I've added a bit of tape along the edges to keep the uh, kind of sharp and small. Well, it's kind of coming a little bit apart. So the tape will hopefully keep things tidy. The screen is now ready for reassembly. Um, note that I have some strips here. Uh, it's uh, our zip ties. Uh, you need something here so that the uh, screen doesn't pop out. Because uh, normally the screws go through through here to the front bezel but when we remove the front bezel there's nothing really keeping it from falling out so just put on some zip ties and it's fine now the monitor has been put back, back together and it's fully working and the image looks uh, clear without the previous splash things, shadows that it had. Which uh, it had because of uh, something that ha happened to the uh, anti-glare thing. But I have to admit in the basement here, when I look at it now, it's not like I see a lot of reflections. So at the moment at least it's perfectly fine. So yeah, that's a great save. Just remove the anti-glare thing and the screen is all good again. Of course now there's nothing protecting the glass itself. So now I need to be careful not to scratch the glass. 